Okay, let's look at a ballistic pendulum problem. Uh, in problems like this, uh, you have to combine conservation of linear momentum, uh, I guess it could be angular momentum depending on the problem, and conservation of energy. So each problem by itself, not a real tough one, you combine them and you're starting to look at how they create AP uh, free response problems. So I have a can filled with clay hanging from two strings and I'm going to shoot it with a uh, 177 caliber uh, pellet from an air pistol. And so the bullet's going to come in from this side and hit and stick to the clay. And so that is an inelastic collision. And then the can will start to move. But you can see it's suspended from two strings. That's the pendulum part. And so it will swing up. And because I have two strings, it will stay level making it easier to estimate the change in height. And so uh, watch the collision, see if you can estimate just by eye the change in height with this meter stick here behind it. You can see the centimeters. So this is a slow-mo video. Do you think we'll see the bullet coming in from the left? Oh, there it is. No, it's going too fast to see, but you can definitely see the results when it hits and sticks. The uh, can will swing, a little bit of jerking there. And so did you see how high it went? We'll see with some stills in a little bit. And so the kinetic energy of the bullet is not equal to the energy of the can in the bullet. And so it hits and sticks. That is an inelastic collision. And so energy is dissipated. The mechanical energy becomes thermal energy. And so the, one of the bigger mistakes with this sort of problem is people will say the kinetic energy in the bullet equaled the energy the can had to try and figure out one of the unknowns. And so we can't do that. And so here is a still of the can before it was shot. The mass of the bullet is a half gram, and the can is 195 grams, and we want the velocity of the bullet. And then here's a still of it at its highest point. And so if we draw a line at those two places and kind of zoom in there, we can see the change in height is about three centimeters. So if you said two or three centimeters from the video, you have a pretty good eye. Might be a tad less than three, but I just kind of rounded to three. It's really close to three. And so another thing hard about this problem in particular is we have to work backwards. And so we know how high the can went. We have to use that information to go back and figure out how fast it was going after the bullet hit, and then back again to figure out the speed of the bullet. When we're all done, if you want a practice problem, pretend like you know the speed of the bullet and you want to figure out how high the can went. And if you get 0.03 meters, then you understand how to do this problem. And so we first use conservation of energy. Uh, as the can swings up, momentum is not conserved in the bullet can system. It starts out with momentum, and at the highest point, it doesn't have any. Uh, so where did it go? Well, it went into the Earth. Uh, but there's no way we're going to be able to measure any change in momentum of the Earth from this experiment. And so we just can't use uh, the conservation of linear momentum. But the energy uh, is conserved. And we can... Uh, Say the initial energy equals the final, but we have to be careful. The initial is the energy just after the collision, and that is in the form of kinetic. And the final energy is the gravitational potential when it's at its highest point. There's no more kinetic. And so the kinetic energy after the bullet hit, notice the mass is the mass of the bullet plus the can, velocity of the bullet plus the can, and then afterwards... Uh, we have MGH for the can and bullet. And so the mass does cancel out, but I wrote that out just to emphasize it's after the collision. So not a too tough a problem. If I gave you a pendulum and said its maximum uh, height was three centimeters, um, how, what's its maximum speed? You really wouldn't have trouble doing that. And so we get 0.77 meters per second. So that's another thing about ballistic pendulums. It's hard to measure the speed of something going really fast like a bullet directly. And so what we do is we have the bullet collide with something and then that slows it down so we can measure the speed of the um, thing it collided with 
and then use physics to figure out the speed of the bullet. And so we already mentioned that we can't work backwards using energy now. Now we have to use conservation of momentum, uh, which is conserved in the collision. So we're sort of assuming the collision happened instantly, and so the uh, bullet hit and stuck to the clay without the can really moving any. Now this analysis still gives us the correct answer even without that assumption. It's just easier to think about. And so while the bullet's coming to a stop in a clay, in the clay, we assume the can didn't swing up at all. And so this is the momentum of the bullet coming in before it hits. This is the momentum of the bullet in the can after, uh, but before it's swung up. And so the final condition here came from the initial energy over here. And so you have to sort of reset what you're saying is initial and final. And so you can see we know everything now except for the velocity of the bullet. And so we put in our numbers and we get 301 meters per second, which is pretty fast for a pellet gun. If you look at the manufacturer's data table, uh, I put eight pumps in the air pistol here and it should be only going like 240, 250 meters per second. So I'll ask my students, why are we overestimating it? And sometimes they come up with it. They usually come up with reasons uh, as to why it should be slower than it's really going, like air resistance. And I'll mention it's got something to do with air resistance. And then uh, I will shoot the can again, but this time I'll forget to put the bullet in. And guess what? The can still moves a little. And so why is it moving? Momentum of the air coming out of the gun. And so you could shoot from further away or come up with a way to block the air, uh, but we're willing to uh, overestimate this to have that little puzzle for people to solve. Another typical thing they would ask in a collision like this is, what was the change in kinetic energy? And so the kinetic energy before the collision is just the bullet. And so now that we know its speed, I'm just using our predicted here, uh, is 22.65 joules. After the collision, you could either do MGH, as we said they're equal, right? Or 1 half MV squared um, immediately after the collision. And so it comes out to only 0.058 joules. And so change is always final minus initial. So I get a negative 22.59 joules. So almost all the energy was lost. So you can see how wrong you would be if you assumed that the kinetic energy of the bullet before the collision equaled the potential energy of the can and the bullet at the highest point. Uh, to kind of show you where this energy goes, I did a, uh, another shot using an infrared camera looking into the can when the bullet hits. And in this infrared view, things that are orange or bright orange are hotter than the surroundings. And so you'll see first the uh, circle the can and then look for when the bullet hits. So there's the can. You can see the bullet hit, started to swing, and we got that bright orange spot that starts to dissipate. You can see other bright things in the room are also warm. That's my Wi Fi router, and that was my hand. And so, ballistic pendulum problems and things like this, where you have to combine momentum and energy or something, you should be able to uh, do now that you've learned about. Uh, conservation of energy and conservation of linear momentum. Later, when we learn angular momentum, we'll be able to look at problems where things collide and then they spin uh, and move.